In 63 House seats in the last election, Democrats would need to flip 25 if they're going to gain control. That's an uphill battle, particularly due to redistricting that favored the Republicans. But in our deep dive today, we're looking at some of the most expensive races in the country and why the two sides are putting up so much cash in these races. Up first is Ohio's 16th district, which was redrawn to favor Republican Congressman Jim Renacci, top ally of House Speaker John Boehner. He's up against Democratic Congresswoman Betty Sutton, who's being backed by a trifecta of labor groups to the tune of nearly $1.5 million. You're listening to the sound of money accumulating in Jim Renacci's pocket. Betty Sutton voted for billions in wasteful stimulus spending that failed to create the jobs it promised. All told, Sutton voted with Nancy Pelosi 99% of the time and counting. Organized labor helped put incumbent Pennsylvania Congressman Mark Critz over the top in the 12th District Democratic primary, and they're at it again in the general, pouring nearly $1.5 million into that race. Republican challenger Keith Rothfuss is being backed by the NRCC in a group with ties to House Majority Leader Eric Cantor. Over in California's 7th District, Democrats are getting a second chance to help candidate Ami Barra defeat Republican Congressman Dan Lundgren. Democrats are outspending the GOP by a 3-to-1 margin in an effort to tie Lundgren to Wall Street and big oil. These are Dan Lundgren's most enthusiastic supporters. After all, he's one of theirs. The middle class gets nothing with Dan Lundgren, but Wall Street's got him right here. And in North Carolina's seventh, Congressman Mike McIntyre is trying to hang on as one of the last surviving Southern Democrats. His district was redrawn last year to cut out heavily Democratic precincts, making him one of the most vulnerable incumbents in the country. The NRCC and the YG Action Fund have put $2 million into this race to point out that even if he's a blue dog, he's still a Democrat. Our state isn't doing well. Our country is not doing well. Mike McIntyre votes a different way than what reflects our beliefs in Wilmington. Mike got caught up with Pelosi and Reid. When he gets to D.C., he's towing the Democratic Party line. Those four races are among the top ten nationwide in terms of outside spending between them. Outside groups have spent just on just a shade under $20 million so far this year. With me now, NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Luke Russert. What's interesting about these, Luke, is that in each one of these cases, you have a different part of, of the political world trying to make a statement. Correct. In Ohio and Pennsylvania, it's sort of labor's last stand. Mm -hmm. or it's always labor's last stand, right? That's always the, at least the way they talk about it. Well, you also have in Ohio and Pennsylvania in those two specific districts. Look at Ohio. That's John Boehner's guy, Jim Renacci, a fellow businessman from that state. In Pennsylvania, you have Rothfuss, this guy backed by Eric Cantor. So you have folks within the GOP leadership flexing their muscle, which people say, well, why are these individual races so important? If Democrats are to take back the House, they need to sweep races like this to right. get to the 25, really 35 of the district thing. But the most other important thing is, is look who the chief backers are, folks with ties to Cantor, folks mm -hmm. with ties to Boehner, which if these guys end up coming to Congress, you remember right. who your friends are. It's you, you do a little stuff. bit. And, and look, we, we, and we'll, get, we'll get to the overall picture here in a minute. We've got to go to McIntyre's seat. What's interesting here is he's done everything he can to run away from the president. Correct. I think even to the point of he won't say who he's voting for. Voted uh, against the health care right. bill. Uh, done everything he w can possibly do to try to be one of these last surviving blue dogs. It's amazing. Remember six years ago, yeah. guys like McIntyre were the folks who put the Democrats over the top, gave them that huge House majority in 06, 08. He's been very effective by saying an old line of attack, which is that all politics is local. Despite the fact that there's tons of money in this race, he goes, I have a high position on the House Armed Services Committee, a high position on the House Agricultural Committee. You don't want some rookie coming in here and getting us to the back of the line. I'm here for North Carolina. He has hung in there more than people thought he Right. And so this race had been, was written off six months ago. The Republican source that I've spoken to said it's trending away from them right yeah, now. Yeah, and it's an amazing. He really has worked hard. Speaking of one, it's sort of, can Southern Democrats save themselves? Can Republicans in California have a life? <laughs> and I think Dan Lundgren is, he only won last time because of the Republican wave. He survived, and any other year he probably would have lost. How? Uh, $5.8 million in yeah. this race. He's a very expensive one. Democrats want Dan Lundgren. I spoke to one who said, this is the buck we want to have on our, mounted on I our wall. He's a chairman of the House Administration Committee. A lot of Democrats say things as trivial, that he's the reason why we have styrofoam cups in the House. <laughs> Well, uh, so it's, per, it's really it's personal. Really personal. It's you all want politics, to take him out. All politics is correct. Like really, really and, local and, here. And most likely than not, he's very vulnerable. Charlie Cook said he was the most vulnerable redistricted Republican, and he has a very uphill battle. Another one that's trending away from them. But on the other races we've been talking about, Ohio and Renacci, yeah. 
folks think that that's going to come back around in the same in PA. But, but it, all, let's say all four. Let's say Democrats sweep all four of these races. Mm -hmm. Hold, hold the, hold the two that they're trying to hold with Kritz and, and McIntyre. Pull off the member versus member. They're still going to come up short. But this is sort of sets the table for 2014, does it not? It sets the table for 2014. It shows you who the big players are. You still have labor. You still have the leadership numbers. Right. You still have the outside super PACs. But more importantly, the other Chuck, I think it shows you a who, you know, which seats they consider still valuable after this redistricting process. So they're going to compete in Pennsylvania in this this old Murtha area for a long time. Well, that's right. I mean, but if a guy like Renacy, like but, right. but if, if Republicans are able to win in a presidential year in places like this, in mm -hmm. Ohio and Pennsylvania, it says they may be off the map. You never know. For a midterm. You never, for a midterm. You never know. We'll see. All right. We we'll see. Good stuff. There's a lot more races to go after. <laughs> we got to talk about Michelle Bachman, but that's for another time. <laughs> Three weeks to go, and it's anyone's game. Our political panel joins me next for a preview of this really important week ahead in the race. We really, really mean.